Welcome everybody to this webinar around uh, standardized work and what is wrong with our, uh, is it time to level up? That's my, that's our question. Uh, today we have with us Want to change image. Today we have with us uh, Dennis Becker from the UK, uh, partner and founder of Supervisor Academy. And me, I'm Joachim Bjurstrom. I am a partner and senior enabler at something called Business Through People. And I'm based in, in Sweden, uh, Scandinavia. So what we're gonna look at today is, let's see, there's a couple of chats here. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna look at today is um, standardized work. And what is it that we're not getting about standardized work? Um, it's not gonna be about the tools because that's not the real key to standardized work according to us. Uh, it's the leadership's role in standardized work and the five steps to level up your, uh, your standardization. And we're going to summarize at the end of, of the session. And we're going to try to do this in 30 minutes. So one of the key things of standardized work is uh, it's been around for many, many years. We've talked about standardization for since the early 90s. But if we are true to ourselves, what are we, how many companies do we come to or work in that are truly making full use of standardized work? And there's a few misconceptions we believe that that is making us uh, struggle and perhaps fail in standardized work. So if we truly believe that without standards, there can be no improvement, why aren't we focusing more on our standardization and uh, what is preventing us from doing a better job? And here we have um, one of the old classic sayings of what lean and continuous improvement is all about is reduction of cost through um, elimination of waste, which in all fairness is true. Uh, but I think for most of us, that leads to an idea uh, that we are here to save ourselves out of a, out of a trouble, you know, out of a problem. For us, if we just, tweak that saying a little bit and says it's all about the relentless increase of adding value by elimination of waste. Basically, it's the same thing, but we are changing the context. And when we change context, it changes everything. Because what happens if we free up resources by eliminating waste, and then we increase that value that that person or that resource can add to the business. What happens to our cost? It plummets. How come? It's actually the, the case is we can sell that resource one more time. Everything else is paid for. Now we can make sure you add value that's gonna increase our revenues with all our costs already paid for. So by doing that, by adding value instead of reducing resource, uh, that calculation is actually pretty fun to do. I had an example of a company where the reduction of, of waste, that idea we're um, so comfortable with, would save something like $40,000 per year by adding value, freeing up resources and adding value meant 24 million net on the last row. So 
by adding value by eliminating waste is quite a powerful thing. Another thing that it, it leads to is the stability of cost in dynamic conditions. And we know we have dynamic conditions over the last couple of years. Uh, and it leads to something that we would call labor linearity. How do we keep costs stable when demand goes up and down? Uh, using standardized work is one of the ways we can do that. So it's not, not about the tools, not at all. Um, the tools are very useful, but tools themselves won't get you to the ultimate goal of standardized work. There are literally a million different templates you can use. The trick is to know what kind of templates there are and use them A story from, from the training we, we received from Mr. Cotto, uh, where he was every morning presenting us with an additional 20, 25 tem templates, because he thought that would be useful for us. And for us, that was extremely confusing. But what he was actually showcasing or demonstrating was that there are so many different ways of describing a reality but the underlying techniques and the rules behind it, those are the same. So never get stuck in the template, uh, even though most of the templates are extremely useful and we need to know how they work and what those rules are, but never get stuck in templates or in tools. So, Coming back to the fundamentals of the basic needs, uh, we're using a, a gateway to demonstrate the, the basic needs of a supervisor to start with. But the foundation down there with management direction and support, that's really what's, what's most important. So what is leadership's role? Well, it's the total commitment to create a culture for being competitive, where we innovate, where we strive for excellence, where it's safe and where quality always goes first. And that means making best use of people and trusted in their care. I like that saying, making best use of people and trusted in their care. At least from what I see a lot of people doing is standardization and creating work standards is a role for first line people. The operators knows best. And that's true in one sense. But if you look at what you truly need to get full use of standardization, there's a lot of things that are outside the scope of the supervisor or the first line people. So what we need to think about as leaders is how to enable that person in the middle of that circle. And there are things they can't really control, like the organization around us, the material we're using, the layout, what equipment we're using, the methods, uh, I can probably affect a little bit of that, or the product or service design. All of those are questions that are higher level in the organization. So system design questions like, are we leveling demand? That's outside my scope as a supervisor. And it's definitely, definitely not a question for the operator on the line. How do we right size our machines or equipments? That's not my decision of working on the line. Are we going for automation? That has a big impact on the organization and the skill sets we need. And how do we create a flexible manning 
staff. So standardized work, if we want to have full, full effect of it, needs to go up way up in the organization and requires a big commitment. Now I'm going to turn it over to, to Dennis, who can explain how that is how that is done. All right. So um, thank you, Joachim. Um, we talk about different levels of implementation of standard work, uh, you know, and I want to start by sort of positioning this a little bit, you know, you've got standard work and you've got standardized work and people get really muddled up about, you know, what is what ultimately it's all about standardizing and improving the work, you know, making it more efficient and of course, making the work more stable, right? You know, this improving and then stabilization, improving one more and then stabilizing again is, you know, the eternal Kaizen loop, right? The PDCA, if you want, followed by the SDCA, right? The plan do check act followed by the standardized do check act. Or of course, as you're starting out a journey, you know, a lean journey, if you want, it, you start out on a lower level of maturity um, in, in terms of, you know, your process capability, in terms of the capability and an understanding of your people. So as the journey progresses, of course, uh, people learn to use more and more sophisticated tools because at that stage in the journey, they're actually required. So, and, and that's part of the theme here, right? You know, the, the tools are a means to an end and we bring them in, the tools and the skills which are required when they are needed according to the maturity and the level of, of the journey that we've actually uh, achieved so far. So uh, let's start by, uh, you know, sort of, you know, looking at these five levels of, um, or level ups of standardized work. So, you know, at the, at the, at the lowest level, and we don't even want to talk too much about the uh, top level, because this is more of a sort of you know a webinar on how to get started and how to get started in a meaningful way. So on the lowest level, you've got a, a complete process instability. Um, you know um, you can see that on the left hand side. You know uh, many of you will will be familiar with your hour by hour charts, and then um, you know which is the bottom left photo. Um, uh, the hour by hour chart shows. A lot of red pitches. In other words, there are many, many disruptions um, in the daily work of the supervisor in the flow of the product, the flow of the line uh, that manifest themselves. And we can fundamentally say we have, you know, a very unstable world, a very unstable process, and we need to, you know, create a level of stability, of basic stability, before we even get into the more advanced tools. Uh, or my, more advanced techniques such as standardized work. And you can see here, you know, actually the, that top photo was taken today because I'm, I'm, I'm with this particular client this week. And, uh, and that's Mario, the supervisor, and he's smiling behind his face mask because he has yet again, uh, you know, achieved his target condition. You can see how much green he now has on his board. And, and, and the backstory to that is, you know, he's now achieving that with 25% uh, less labor in the line as well so you know he's made a journey from uh, utter instability in the line to uh, a, a relative stability and i would say you can see st still see a few red dots on a lower level and he's not never even touched the standardized work templates it's on the horizon for him uh, but he's not there yet so what we learned from mr carter here is that you know there are certain conditions that have to be met and certain steps that you have to take in order to arrive at standardized work and then to exploit standardized work afterwards. Um, so you know as you're in this unstable condition, even before you hit you know the the standardized work templates, and that's the first mistake that or one of the first mistakes we see a, a lot of um, you know lean practitioners do. Right, they jump in, they they know about standardized work, they've taken a course or whatever, and they go right in and they want to create it, and of course nobody in the organization is ready truly to to um, exploit and 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 and, uh, and 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 pull the gains from from uh, using those tools and using those templates we're just not mature enough so mr carter carto told us well you know there's certain preconditions for standardized work um you know and uh, you might have come across this but you know fundamentally it needs to be uh, human movement right uh, so you know if it's not based on human movement 
um, and 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 the motion that we need to optimize because you know um, um, uh, time is a is a shadow of motion was his word right you know if so we if there's no motion if there's no operator work then it doesn't make sense to apply the standardized work towards because they're focused um, uh, pretty much exclusively on the work of the operator then of course the work needs to be repetitive in other words we need to have recognizable cycles in order to make sure that we can actually see it again and again and optimize it again and again and reap the benefit again and again and then the third condition and in no particular order is uh, that you need basic stability now basic stability you know you can you can and you have to visualize it um, you know you can see the lack of basic stability in the bottom left uh, image there you know lots of reds lots of interruptions and the basic stability actually illustrated by the top picture where we have much less interruptions a much more consistent and uh, stable flow and when you get to that point then it does make sense to pull out some of the more advanced tools perhaps soon and uh, as i said even with that very very stable process mari isn't quite ready yet because he's got some few a few other experiments that he's working on now then uh, when we eventually get there then of course you look at standardized work you look at the three elements of standardized work at the tech time the work sequence and the standard work and uh, process stock and you might look at the tools that uh, Joachim displayed you know the process capacity chart you know to understand you know what the process is capable of or where the potential bottlenecks might be and so on you have the standardized work combination chart that looks at the interaction between the person and the movement of the person and 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 the machines um and then uh, you have the standardized um work chart which is typically the layout where you can see the operator cycle and and uh Joachim, uh commented on that and said well you know this label linearity concept the idea of you know defining the work cycle of uh, the various operators in the line in order to adjust dynamically to you know changes in tech time if you want right those dynamic conditions the flexibility that we need we define for each of these operating levels a new you know work uh, um, work uh, or standardized work chart right you know it's basically redefining how do we get the most efficient work seat and for this level of operating with this amount of labor and, uh, and 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 with that we keep the unit cost basically stable that's that labor linearity kind of idea and then of course you also have to stand that in process stock which very much has to do with the lead time and the buffering that we have of course the less variability we have the less buffering we need and the faster the product can uh, flow. And that's all very basically. Now, once we've established that, then of course we move to level three and we try, we try to be able to work to standardized work, right? You know, standardized work being, you know, the goal or the target that we've set ourselves, the target condition, that's how we want to operate. And then we really have to work and remove all of the obstacles that are getting in the way of that. And as we are achieving a more consistent, um, you know, uh, work to standard work, then we can start taking out some of the weights. So, so really you can see a, a continuum here as we progress as through these different levels from, you know, basic uh, stability to establishing standardized work to um, being able to work to that standardized work and then progressively kaizening that standardized work um, as we go along so that's kind of the five levels that's the broad scheme so let me uh, have a quick um, um, look at next slide right a, a little bit more detailed so same image same five levels up but now let's look at um, some of the um, uh, tools I guess or the capabilities that we need to uh, develop in our people um, in order to be able to use and extract value from standardized work so you know fundamentally the journey of standardized work and all of the tools that we are using are all about this 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 whole journey of Kaizen is all about developing capabilities of process and people at the same time, right? The process won't improve until the people's thinking changes and their capability of managing, of leading, of managing improves uh, as well. So uh, for each stage in the process, I mean, you can 
argue about which precise tool you bring in. Joachim uh, showed our gateway for the TWI trending within industry, uh, base, basic skills. And those are really a good starting point uh, for an unstable world, right? If you start out in the line, um, like Mario's line there, uh, where he has a lot of red pitches, right? You know, a lot of interruptions to his daily flow and, and, and to the daily work. You can see, typically see the supervisor shooting around, you know, trying to put out all the fires and stuff like that. And you want to get into your basic stability where the supervisor can actually step out of that daily grind and think about the improvement. If you haven't got that, don't even start with standardized work. There's absolutely no point, right? It's a piece of paper. It's going to sit there. Some people might have a look at that or try to coerce some people into it, um, but the capability is just not there. So what do we do? Um, we look at, um, you know, basic stability has very much to do with the four M's, right? You know, you've got the materials, they need to be available when I need to do the work, right? You know, I, I can't be waiting for those materials that would cause a spike in my cycle time. Uh, so materials need to be available and they also need to be at the right quality because otherwise, again, me trying to solve the problem given to me by the material, by my internal or external supplier means that I get a spike in my cycle time, right? The machines need to be available, but they also need to produce good quality when we are actually using them. Uh, then we've got the third M, the man, you know, I've put it as a woman. Uh, you know, um, so so um, they need to be available, but they also need to know what they're doing. In other words, they need to have basic training, right? You know, we're not talking high level standardization, but they need to know what they're doing and they do need to follow a method, which broadly speaking leads to success, uh, which leads us to the fourth M. Um, uh, the method. In order to define that, of course, and, and again, I come back to what uh, Joachim said, you know, these are skills that really sit at the front line. It's the supervisor that drives it and the operator participates in that journey and, and, and assists the supervisor for a period of their time. So you need to visualize it with an hour by hour chart, you know, like Mario used, you know, all these colors that we had, to, we saw the green and red pitches and so on, um, to visualize disruptions, catch those problems, and then, of course, remove those um, basic uh, interruptions to stability. And, and the tools that we know are very good at that point is, of course, 5S, you know, one thing, uh, one place for everything, everything in its place, you know. And by that, I don't mean making things look pretty. I mean, talking about, you know, can the worker work safely? Is it apt for quality? you know, is the workplace laid out efficiently and, and consistently enough for the operator not to have to look for stuff. And then again, my cycle time spikes and my output drops and you get these interruptions where you're not hitting your target output. And then of course, when the supervisor wants to go in it and he's identified these problems beyond, you know, layout, then we're starting to look at things like, you know, are all of our people properly trained to the best known method, which also needs to be defined, right? What's that best method and how do I train it out? So everybody knows, understands, and is able to do that method or to work to that method. And then we've got also then afterwards, you know, once the, the method is good and everybody understands the method, then we need to motivate people to actually follow that method also. So we have the uh, three, you know, the, the holy trinity, if, if you want, of the uh, TWI base skills for the supervisor of TWI job instruction, TWI job methods, and TWI job relations, which are applied at that level uh, to create that basic stability. Once you get to the level more or less where you see a lot of green pitches, as Mari does, then you can start entertaining the possibility of getting into standardized work. And the first thing, of course, is, you know, you bring in you know, the standardized work cheats, but also in order to do that, you have to learn a new skill if you're the supervisor, right? Because we're talking about the skills that a supervisor needs to be develop here. And, um, and here we've got the time study, right? You know, supervisors need to be able to understand the variability at the level of work content in their, in their people. They need to be able to uh, build some basic line balance charts. And, and from that, then they develop the deep understanding that is really required to fill in the work capacity uh, is 
sorry, the uh, process capacity chart, and with that, the standardized work chart, and through that, then in the end, the uh, standardized work instruction chart as well, which helps us to uh, train the people. So uh, you can see again a couple of items I want to point out here. Um, you know, you can see a little line balance chart, and you can see even at that level. Um, you know, that's not Mario's line, it's another line, but, you know, you can see the imbalances in terms of work content allocation. That's not what we're concerned about at the moment, right? We're getting into that only at this level because we've got basic stability. Products are popping off the end of the line at a predictable, reliable pace. And then, uh, of course, you've got some variability on the work content, which gradually we need to understand and we need to start squeezing. So again, this cycle of squeezing variability, lifting up performance, squeezing variability one more time, lifting up performance and so on. The role of the manager that um, um, uh, Joachim uh, talked about earlier, you can see on the left-hand side in the picture where you know this particular client, and, and we tend to use Toyota Kata as a, as a coaching framework, right? You know, we give the manager something to do. The manager is, support to, is supposed to support, to direct, and to remove obstacles that are getting in the way of the supervisor. Stuff that is outside of the, uh, you know, scope of that supervisor needs to be taken away, needs to be dealt with, and needs to be supported. So there are daily coaching sessions between uh, the guy on the left. You can see him holding a Carter coaching card, uh, which is Ben and Mari in front of his learner's board here. And, and they're iterating through this journey of progressively stabilizing um, the, um, you know, the performance of the line. Um, so if you look on the very right-hand side here, um, you know, it gives you a little bit of an idea of what kind of thing we're focusing on to level up uh, from one level to the other. So we don't get confused. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a heuristic, it's a simplification, but at the lowest level, to get from unstable to basic stability, which is that green line, you would focus on understanding the work fundamentally, right? And defining that work and helping people to understand that work, the basics, We're not even talking cycle times. And then as we get that basic stability and the green pitches, we can start really looking at, you know, uh, the work content uh, for the operator, balance that out and so on. So we're focused on being able to follow the standard work that we've defined on the lower level, right? We remove the obstacles to following standard, uh, standard work which then gives us the ability at the end of that, uh, that level, if you want, to set the standardized work, which again, will give us some difficulties, um, you know, as we're trying to follow it in step three. So step three or level three is very much about being able to, focus, uh, to follow standardized work, removing the obstacles again, squeezing that variability before we then start in level four, getting into the proper speaking Kaizen. So, just to summarize, fundamentally, people are jumping up into level three or four, and without the strong, stable foundation, you know, the preconditions in place and some of those skills that people need to really extract the value, there's no point jumping to that. Thank you, Dennis. So that, that really leads us to the, uh, the conclusion of things here, uh, coming back to that that gateway which leads us to the basic needs um, of a supervisor basically um, and what we're saying is that standardized work is an extension of those basic needs and if you don't have basic needs in place uh, you're going to struggle with your standardized work and that was actually a, a key point that uh, Mr. Cardo sent with us when he just looked very decisive at us and said, you have all the J programs from TWI, right? Otherwise you cannot do standardized work. He was very determined. So basic needs for basic stability had to be in place before you level up to doing all those cool stuff that you can actually do in, in standardized work. And that leads also to the foundations here where knowledge of work and knowledge of responsibilities for managers become really important. Uh, because what kind of knowledge about the work do managers need to have? How do they make the right decisions about the way this company is going and where our standardized work is leading us? What is the knowledge about responsibilities around standardized work? 
what is the operator's role? What is the supervisor's role? And what is my role as a manager in terms of standardized work? So a lot of information in 30 minutes that went really fast. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got value from listening to this. And we look forward to see you again in a webinar or some kind of contact in the close future. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please send to either me or Dennis or both uh, to see how, um, if we can help you on your way. I see we have a Q&A question. We do have a Q&A question, yes. Do you see it, Joachim? Yeah. Okay. So it says, do you see digital transformation as distraction or chance to implement and improve standardized work? Symbiosis. This is this is an old uh, schoolmate of mine, actually, Gregor. <laughs> so, you know, back from college. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, you know, um, quickly before Joachim, what's Joachim is thinking about it? I believe that, you know, at, at different stages in our journey, um, we will uh, have the need and the benefit of different, um, uh, different tools. So yes, of course, there can be synergy. Yes, there can be uh, some advantages in, in, in leveraging uh, digital tools. But I would say generally we want to bring in tools when we have basic or even advanced stability, right? Because you don't want to automate uh, in an in, um, in inefficient or not Kaizen process. That would be my my starting uh, uh, point, perhaps uh, as a as an attempt at an answer. I I totally agree. Uh, so tools which digitalization is are brought in on need basis. Uh, so if a digital version of a template uh, works better and is more streamlined, cre creates less, less waste, then by all means. Uh, but the key is, does it actually bring less waste to it? Uh, so use whatever tool template you need, but make sure you're not adding waste to your own process. Is it the simplest way of getting there? And I would also say, don't go there too soon. You want to learn the, the basics of things first, and then let's see if we can digitalize, and digitalize that to streamline the operations. Um, so we have another one from Moshe Gabay. We're used to start with Kaizen and after use standard, standardized work as a tool. Okay, so what Mr. Cardo told us is that standardized work is the beginning and the end. Uh, so standardized work is the means to do Kaizen. And what we've tried to explain in this webinar today is uh, getting to that level where you can actually do real continuous improvement, real Kaizen means, needs basic stability first. So we're looking at Kaizen a bit too soon, the real way of Kaizen, um, a bit too soon. Uh, so building basic stability, basic capabilities first before we go off and do all the cool stuff that the pros can do. I think perhaps as an as an additional sort of point is uh, people get hung up a lot on on, on language, right? And uh, and of course that's what we use as as consultants as well, right? We try to redefine language in order to change perception. So fundamentally, what is kaizen? Kaizen is you know small rapid improvement cycles, such as uh, what we get through Toyota Kata, for example, um, uh, improving gradually and very fast. Um, you know the process. So you know kaizen. Uh, can happen with any kind of tool in this sense, right? In the Toyota sense, of course, it's very much linked to standardized work, right? Because that's the level of maturity that they're at. Does that mean that we can't Kaizen without standardized work? Absolutely not. And that's been kind of my argument, right? Actually, we need to Kaizen basic stability first before we can 
uh, then get to standardized work and Kaizen on the back of standardized work, which is, of course, really cool because when you get to that level of definition of standard work, um, then, you know, which they call standardized work, uh, you know, because it's it's a term, um, then, um, wow, you know, you have a deep understanding of your process and it really, um, you know, enables you to look very deeply and to remove even the tiniest little bit of waste from your process. But that's, uh, you know, that comes later, you know, when, when the big chunks, the big fish have been fried, and then you move on to the smaller, and smaller fish, really, in, in, in terms of the problems that you're catching. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, a little bit over time, but uh, thanks again for listening, and thank you for participating and asking questions. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, please send to us. And apart from that, have a great day. Thank you, Joachim and Dennis. See you soon, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.